How's it going, y'all? It's Gregor. So, Rainbow Six has officially been out for a year, and since this year's worth of DLC has been put out in full, I thought it'd be appropriate to give people an idea of how to play these operators, and that's gonna be every single one of them. And being aware of what the enemy can throw at you, as well as what you can do with your teammates, is a crucial component of not being a pleb in Rainbow Six. So I'm gonna keep it straightforward and to the point. Alright? You listening? Take notes, class. We're starting with the FBI. Here we go. Stay in relatively close proximity to your teammates, then find a reinforced wall to make a really big fucking hole out of so your teammates can push into the objective. Don't get killed at the beginning of the round like a dumbass. Thermite has an almost 100% pick rate in Pro League for a reason. Stay at range and take people down with your assault rifle. It works really well with an ACOG, muzzle brake, and vertical grip. You can use the shotgun, but I think Thermite's assault rifle is really, really good and worth strongly considering over it. Op 4 neutralized. Put back clip in your funkin' wagnalls. Ash is pretty useful. Breach windows from a safe distance so that you and your teammates can shoot through them. You can breach everything that you can with a conventional breach charge. You can peek and take down defenders in a room very effectively this way. Ash's R4C is more commonly used than her G36. I think both guns are good options with the ACOG scope. No. Try to flash hide it with the G36 and the R4C with the compensator. Oh, get out of here, son! Oh, I, I know. even saw her! And I could. Gotcha. Pop in the back. I didn't need it or anything. Loot Castle is a bit of a situational operator, but if you're stuck in a room with lots of windows, his bulletproof barricades are very, very helpful. You can make a door completely bulletproof by placing a deployable shield behind it if you're willing to forego impact grenades. Try to cover flanks, i.e. the angles from which you don't want to get shot from. His semi-auto shotgun is really good to cover angles at close range, but the iron sights are pretty garbo. I recommend a reflex sight. The UMP is also a very good SMG with high damage output. Try the hollow sight with a compensator. Use your heartbeat sensor to scope out the general idea of where the attackers are coming from. You can try to be a one-man army, but if you communicate with your teammates like you're supposed to, it yields really good results. You can blast people through walls with a semi-auto shotgun very easily. Pulse also synergizes with some operators really well, which I'll get to when I get to it. Pulse can also use the UMP-45, another good primary weapon choice. And that's the FBI. Let's go to the SAS. Throw Electrodium Explodies at walls that Thermite or Hibana can't break into. Your help will be greatly appreciated. You can basically take away the support capabilities of the defenders by throwing your grenades into rooms as well. You have the choice between the L85 and AR-33 Assault Rifle. I like the L85 quite a bit, but the AR-33, in my experience, is pretty good with a hollow sight. Spoiler alert, Sledge has a sledge. That sledge has the same power as a breaching charge, and you get a near-infinite supply. So, you get the idea. It's very useful. He was one of the most picked ops in Pro League last season. You can bulldoze your way through walls and Kool-Aid man your opponents from unexpected angles. The British Assault Rifle is, in my opinion, one of the best in the game. It's easy to control and has very good damage output. Works good with an ACOG, flash hider, and vertical grip. His secondary SMG-11 is good with a hollow sight and flash shider, but the SAS pistol is one of the best in the game, and I don't object to using that either. Sledge also has frag grenades, very useful. You can throw your abilities and choke points for area denial purposes. You may not know if you're doing much to the enemy or not in terms of damage, but the mere ability to keep attackers from coming into a room for a certain period of time is very, very useful. 
Smoke's most common loadout used to consist of the M59 shotgun with an SMG-11 ACOG mounted. Well, now you can't do the latter, but it's still a powerful piece of work if you know how to use it. Coming through the doorway. Smoke is a valuable addition to a team and had a high pick rate in Pro League this season for a reason. Place your jammers on stairs to net drones during the planning phase. Move quick. You can also place jammers near reinforced walls to add an additional layer of defense to them. The MP5K is a good submachine gun and worth using paired with the hollow sight and flash hider. The shotgun is a good option too. I don't know, but do I need to reinforce anywhere? I have two reinforcements still. Alright, done with the SAS. Now we're gonna go to GIGN, the French. Use the shock drone in the planning phase to take down cameras as well as troll the shit out of defenders when the opportunity presents itself. You get two of these drones, one during the initial phase and one afterward. The shock drone works really well in tandem with your opponents pushing in to distract defenders. It does 10 HP of damage per taser hit, but if you chain 3 or 4 of those, that can make the difference in a gunfight. The FAMAS F2 assault rifle that Twitch uses is arguably the best assault rifle in the game. It has stupidly fast DPS. Use it with an ACOG, compensator, and vertical grip. Or a hollow sight. Okay, guys. Good game. Monte Cristo is a support operator. Walk into rooms with your shield extended and draw fire for your teammates to shoot back at the defenders. He's just standing there, menacingly! You can either use the P9 or go Dirty Harry. I like the revolver for its damage output personally, and it works good with the laser sight, surprisingly. Use smoke grenades for objective-based hey. stuff. Or not left-hand corner, but back there behind the, the thing. Grab that house, Steve. We going out to dinner. Uh, oh, he's a recruit. Another recruit in there. Last guy's out there. Just take the hostage off. You got this. Oh. We'll start with Rook. At the beginning of the round, distribute some serious protection to prevent the transmission of bullet transmitted STDs. That's it. Doc, on the other hand, requires some actual semblance of technical awareness to use his ability, but it's still pretty useful. You can revive friendlies from range, as well as juice up some of your own health pool for a period of time. In tandem with Rook's sweater vests with three armor, you're basically a tank. Both of these operators have access to the P90, a pretty good pump-action shotgun, and the MP5. I like the MP5 with an ACOG, flash hider, and vertical grip. I'm also quite fine with the revolver for reasons demonstrated here. On to the Germans! Use your scanning tool to take out cameras, especially the placeable ones Valkyrie can use. The scanning tool obviously scans more than just cameras. If you didn't find the objective during the planning phase, you can get a general idea of where it is just by seeing where the defenders are placing their stuff. In the bomb mode, you can actually locate the bomb itself, too. IQ has great primary weapon choices. The AUG works very good with an ACOG scope and the SG with a hollow. She can also bring a machine gun that kicks pretty heavily, but has good damage output and works a lot like a high cap assault rifle. Use your shield flash to blind bad boys and take them down if you're able. Work in tandem with your teammates too. You have a shield, so you function as a support base role more or less. Other than that, go ham and watch your flanks.
place your splody snipers on the floor for maximum area coverage. Also to ensure that they don't get destroyed by your teammates reinforcing walls. Grenades help win rounds, and Jaeger is a common pick in Pro League because of this. He's also the only defender with an assault rifle, which works really good with an ACOG and compensator. I don't think a lot of people really understood that. More like gay. Merc 8. One op four remaining. Nope. Place shock boxes on reinforced walls to keep them from getting blown up, or use them in tandem with razor wire to take out drones and choke points like stairs. The MP7 is one of the best SMGs in the game and works with an ACOG scope pretty well, but I'm also very partial to the pump action shotgun because its damage, range, and cycling rate are all really good. On to Mother Russia. Fuse's cluster charges work really well on ceilings and windows because in those locations it's not as easy to see you coming to the defenders. Place them where you think the enemy is and let her rip. Here, let me breach them. Oh, got it. Fuse has a great machine gun with good damage output and a massive magazine. Use it like a machine gun, not an assault rifle, okay? Spraying is fine. It's a legitimate strategy. Use your tools the way they're supposed to be used. Anyway, the assault rifle is good too. Some people don't like fuse so with a shield, Israel but I've seen people make it work regardless, and I personally like running it myself as well. Poland. Oh, I like that. I like that too. Damn, wrecked! Fucking tarnished. If you get the plane map, especially at night, when it's easier to see into the plane itself, your DMR works wonders. Got it. That's just one example of Glaz's usefulness, though. Stay at range, shoot in the rooms where the Got defenders you. are. Kind of like what I described with Ash. You can take out basic barricades in three shots. Another cool thing about Glaz's rifle is that you can shoot through Castle's bulletproof barricades with it, ah! and you can often do so with pretty amusing go. results. As you can see, his rifle works well at close range, too, thanks to its sheer damage output. The Russian defenders get a silent semi-auto shotgun that somehow works really well. Got it. Like all of our other. Right? Don't get me wrong. Like I think. As for Capkin, place your traps on doors and nowhere else. Window traps are not only incredibly obvious but also somewhat useless. Place the traps towards the bottom of the door. It's a trip wire, as in feet, as it's not meant to be seen. And when it's not seen, it actually works pretty well. Wow, I'm having so many hardware issues right now. It's just, oh, I can't. Oh, I can't. I'm struggling to maintain 25 frames. Rip. Tachanka is a very situational operator that works well if you know how to place his MG. You can fire lots of bullets without reloading. So hold down a choke point and unleash a symphony of lead when you see appropriate. Chanka works well with an SMG in my experience, and his 3-rated armor comes in handy for a guy that needs to stay stationary to use his ability. I didn't know he was there. I was running That does it for the vanilla operators. Now I'll get into DLC, starting with the Canadians. You can use Buck's shotgun to blast through bad guys in destructible cover like any other shotgun. You can also blast bad guys at close range as well as use it as a breaching tool. Oh, meets on the I find a semi-auto rifle to be good, but his fully automatic rifle works really well with an ACOG and flash hider as well. Got him. Buck is also one of a few attackers that can use frag Here, grenades, which that, are really uh, useful unto road. themselves. Beautiful! Uh, Frost uses traps, like Capkin, except these traps are actually difficult to spot, unlike Capkins. Place them under windows or behind shields and doorways for maximum effect. They're especially useful under windows to catch people off guard since they're so difficult to spot. Frost's semi-auto shotgun is a solid piece of work, as well as her old school Sten SMG. Red dot sight and extended barrel are solid choices on that. On to the Navy SEALs. Blackbeard can troll like a champ by busting out windows and shooting them from the top with his shield mounted. The shield is bulletproof and has a reasonable amount of hit points, though it's not invincible. Regardless, he's still a very strong pick with a high play rate in Pro League. I recommend using the Mark 17 with an ACOG, muzzle brake, and vertical grip, as well as stun grenades. Got him. Valkyrie is a very strong operator, plays cameras in places where there aren't currently existing cameras. 
Main entrances to the building, as well as staircases, are especially useful. Communicate with your team to get the most out of them. Both the shotgun and the submachine gun are good weapon options. I like the Spaz with the laser sight on its own, and the MPX with hollow sight and muzzle break. This is like the second time I've played this map. That does it for the seals. Let's go to Brazil. Use Capital's fire breathing crossbow to weed out defenders in tightly knit spots or to muscle them into locations where it can be easier for you to shoot them. The smoke is also useful in and of itself. It's smoke. Like a smoke grenade. As far as main weapons, he has a machine gun, but I find his assault rifle so good that it more or less negates his existence. You may notice I like using ACOG scopes a lot in assault rifles, but this gun works really well with hollow sight too, as well as muzzle brake and the vertical grip. Capitao's frag grenades are handy, as always. Frag Lurk! Talk. That's that's I'm your job. Fuck. Lurk. You can down opponents easily with your silenced pistol, the then case. reveal the location of bad guys. The you can accomplish this with more ease than other operators tryhard could, since your stealth ability allows you to sneak up on those pesky Turtle Beach wearing tryhards very easily. Nice. There might be another guy to the left, there's definitely another guy to the right. Just left, left, left. Her SMG is very good, but I personally prefer her semi-auto shotgun, more or less for the same reason as I like to use the shotgun with Pulse. Kavera and Pulse get along pretty well, and can engage in a rather romantic and considerably violent honeymoon if they choose to. Perfect. Nicely done. Really well, yeah. Oh, another left? one stairs, another one stairs. Okay. Look left, too. Alright. Still coming up. Nicely done. Alright, getting towards the end of the video. Yeah. I hope you found the class okay. enjoyable, folks. You Let's finish our journey in there. Japan, shall we? Got her. Basically a combination of Thermite and Ash. Destroy reinforced walls from a distance, then shoot into them. You can also get creative with these charges. You get three uses and can detonate them remotely, so you can blow out three windows in a room all at the same time if you so desire, since they will fully destroy regular barricades. A full set of these will also destroy floor-mounted reinforcements. Hibana's assault rifle is my favorite in the game and boasts a very high amount of DPS with good range firing capabilities. Hostage secured. The Supernova shotgun is also a good shotgun in and of itself, but I prefer to run the assault rifle in tandem with the Bering 9 SMG. However, the Japanese operators bring what is probably the best pistol in the game to the table, and that's worth considering. Good job. Sit in the corner while you set up your drone in the planning phase. Stick it to the ceiling on a flat surface, then fuck people up as they come in with your stun rounds. Echo isn't particularly suited to roaming thanks to his 3 armor 1 speed, but the drone mitigates this to a great deal. He has the option between an integrally suppressed MP5 and a very powerful pump action shotgun. I like both of them. The MP5 is good with an ACOG scope and the supernova with a hollow sight. Or any other sight, ideally, since the irons are trash. The Nova boasts high range for a pump action shoddy and I love it to pieces. The Bering 9 is also a solid sidearm. And that's all I have to say about the various operators in the game. I hope that you found the video helpful. Keep in mind that Rainbow Six is a game that is constantly evolving and changing in various ways, and to consider the upload date of this video itself, but everything I'm saying here for the most part should remain relevant. Play a number of games with a wide variety of operators, look up your stats online, find out what you're doing well with. Statistics might surprise you and give you a different idea of how to play the game than you might think. Next year, we're getting eight more operators in a similar fashion to what we've got in 2016, featuring operators from CTUs in Spain, Hong Kong, Poland, and South Korea, and I will cover them when they come out as well. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe for additional Rainbow Six content like this. If you have any suggestions for videos in the future, do let me know. Until next time, I'm Gregor. Stay frosty. Thank you.